Hi, I am Michael Bean, and this is your free lesson for myfreeactingclass.com. Uh, you can find videos from all of our past lessons just by going to the website. Uh, I'm an acting teacher. I've been act, uh, teaching uh, film and TV acting for almost 20 years. Uh, today, our guest is somebody I'm really excited about because he was one of my mentors when I first, first started uh, doing professional performance, you know, back when I was doing improv before I was doing film and TV at all. Uh, and at that point, you know, I just thought, you know, David Jones was just like, he was like a real professional. Uh, and, uh, and he taught me a lot about um, performing and, uh, and also some of the things uh, that ended up being uh, guiding principles for how I run my business. You know, so uh, the useful, you know, mentor and good human. Um, yeah, I, I pulled up one of his many bios from online. Uh, looks, Vancouver Sun called him one of the funniest persons in Vancouver. Uh, he uh, has he's performed around the world. You know, he's performed for uh, the uh, the military. Uh, he's performed in classrooms. You know, he's a very popular MC. Uh, he's as an actor, he's been on uh, he's done professional theater, uh, performing in, uh, producing, directing. Uh, he's done radio and television. He's done so many uh, corporate shows and. Uh, there's this quote. He's also performed for such folks as Martha Stewart, Meatloaf, Bill Gates, and ex BC premiers Mike Harcourt and Bill Vanderzam. Uh, I love that uh, Mike Harcourt and Meatloaf, you know, are there in the same sentence. I think that's one of the <laughs> really pleased me about that particular bio. I don't uh, even know where you found that one. That's awesome. <laughs> the, uh, here's uh, David on IMDb. Uh, and you know, of course, you uh, can. This is his you know, professional headshot, and you can you know, see his uh, credits here. Uh, and uh, then, I, what I, one of the things that I think is really interesting is how many other categories he appears in. So, okay, so we've got actor, but we've also got additional crew, producer, director, writer, editor, music department, second <laughs> director, assistant director, soundtrack. Thanks. And self, you know, and there's and there's credits listed under every single one of these things, uh, which I, I think is indicative, you know, of uh, David and his career as a um, sort of extremely uh, multi-experienced performer, somebody who's you know pursued all sorts of different avenues of professional performance. So uh, there we go. You are now David. Yeah. We uh, we someone went was saying something like that. And I said, yeah, but I just haven't found out what I'm good at yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I do, uh, uh, I say I have a short attention span and I love doing different things. And if there's something I don't know how to do, I try to find people who can teach me how to do that. So I started making my own movies and making my own short films and even then I, uh, I started working in different formats and I shot a film on Super 8 because I wanted to know what it was like to shoot a film on Super 8. If you don't know what that is, that's an old film stock that is not, <laughs> done. it's very expensive to get it developed, costs like $500 just to get the film developed. Um, uh, um, shot a film in a moving master, shot a, a, a musical because I was like, I wonder what that would be like to do. Um, it was hard. Uh, I also pitched a TV series that got picked up and um, had a huge learning with that. Uh, we filmed six episodes. And uh, one of the things, if you ever get there, and I'll, sh I'll shut up soon, um, uh, is uh, be careful when you sign your contracts. Because they did a sneaky little thing with me, which is they signed, uh, they gave me a contract that said, you own this TV series, but so do we. And I went, okay. So they have since sold the TV series. It's on Amazon Prime right now, even though it was filmed like eight years ago. It's on Out TV. It was on here. It was also in Europe. But the amount of money I got from it was zero. Ooh. Because they owned it as well. So I didn't wow. notice it in the contract. That meant they could do whatever they wanted with it. And I could do whatever I wanted with it. I could also go to Amazon Prime and go, hey, do you want my series? But of course, they have more connections than I do. <laughs> so, right. so they knew how to do that. And it wasn't until it was everywhere. And it is, it's on Amazon Prime right now. You can watch it. 
Um, uh, so yeah, I, I, I've done everything. I, I do a lot as, um, maybe I should shut up soon, but um, uh, like I, I like creating stuff for other people. So I was the entertainment manager for the 2010 Winter Olympics. So I created all the on-site entertainment uh, that was there. Um, and like Mike said, I've traveled around the world. I've performed for different companies. I'm currently wearing huge glasses uh, <laughs> my glasses broke and I ordered ones and I went, well, these ones look interesting when they arrived. I was like, oh my God, they're huge. <laughs> they're pretty great, especially, you know, with your virtual background, <laughs> like the, uh, they're, they're very character. Yeah. Uh, the, the oh. there's so basically there, there's so many different things that we, we could get David to talk about, you know, that yeah. it was like, that we could be here for, you know, a lot longer than half an hour. So, you know, uh, so we are just going to have to be selective. Um, yeah, well, do we want to do it that people ask me questions? I, I would love that. Um, you know, so the as, sort of as we're uh, before we get there, I want to you know ask you sort of two questions, and then we'll just open it up. Okay. You know, so uh, the you know one is specifically about uh, improv, you know, for or improvisation for uh, film and TV, you know, because I know that like not only do you have more experience there than anybody that we've had talked to us so far but you're also teaching it uh, at Vancouver yeah. School you know and so you know um, talking a little bit about you know, okay. what that's like you know or what that was like for you making the transition from you know doing improv live you know to doing it on camera you know or you know some kind of you know uh, top level thoughts for people sharing your experience there you know I, I think might be really useful okay and you yeah, had so another one yeah, but we'll see where, where this one takes us. Oh, do you want me to do this one first? Okay. Yeah, okay. if you don't mind. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, I, I did improv when I, and, and we had it in my high school way back in the old days, back uh, uh, when they had high schools. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and uh, when I uh, graduated and was out in the world, I was, you know, trying to figure out what to do and then I went okay I'll just try this improv thing again and I went to the Vancouver Theatre Sports League which was the place to go and um, took their classes and uh, became professional on their stage so well, for about seven years I think it was I um, performed on their stage about five shows a week on average in the middle of that I went to acting school um, my a friend, I was taking classes, taking night classes once a week and stuff, sort of like what you guys are doing with Michael. And uh, a, a teacher said to me, I don't know what Michael teaches you guys, but a teacher said to me <laughs> that if you were going to be a professional lawyer or a professional doctor, you wouldn't think twice about going and doing an intensive study uh, to learn that craft. So David, if you're thinking of becoming a professional actor, you should invest the time in doing that. So I auditioned for Studio 58. I actually had to audition for it twice. Um, uh, it didn't get in the first time, got in the second time. And it was funny though, when I graduated, I went right back to improv. <laughs> I was doing more improv than uh, serious acting. Acting on, doing improv on film and TV, I'll, I'll tell you actually where I get the most work as an improviser or i did before i became ubcp was for commercials um, when i teach improv i teach about being as realistic as possible i talk about having high stakes the, the comedy comes from the high stakes but it has to be grounded in some sense of reality so sometimes in school improv you say stuff like "Ooh, my unicorn just gave birth to a laser shooting bunny and stuff like that and you say really weird stuff or crazy crazy stuff but it, and it might get a laugh from the people in school but out there in the world <laughs> that's just crazy right um so if you can Find a way to be, if you're like, I'll, I'll give you two examples of improv that I used in auditions for that I booked. Um, one was for a commercial for NBC and they just wanted me to improvise a, 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 a angry customer holding a stuffed raccoon. And I know Michael has talked to you guys about using real life as well. I know that because I show a clip of him saying that to my students now. <laughs> um, um, 
but uh, in the news, and this is tragic, but in the news there had been the story about a man who had been tasered at the airport. So while I was improvising, and I was like, you let me on this, let me on this plane, it's not fair. Don't you dare call security, don't you dare, oh, you put that taser down, you put that taser down, right? And I just started improvising that there was a security guard coming at me with a taser, which was totally all improvised. And I was just pulling from the headlines, like pulling stuff from real life, and I'm making it high stakes. I booked the commercial, and not only did I book the commercial, um, they had a security guard that they added to the commercial because that was my idea that I improvised. Um, so they didn't taser me though, they tackled me to the ground. Actually ran into a small problem that I had to call my agent about because they were grabbing me by my hands and knocking my legs out, but they didn't have a safety pad for me. So I had to call my agent and go, um, I'm doing kind of stunts right now in this commercial and I'm going onto concrete. Anywho, the other time that, um, I uh, did improv and I got it was, and I think, because I watch your videos, Michael, so I think you've said, addressed this too. Sometimes for commercials, they, they just want to know that you're not shy and that you might be fun to work with. Particularly if they're doing it in a store. I had an audition for a London drugs commercial. And so when you see a commercial that's filmed in a real store, they're having to film that like at 4 a.m. They have to film that when the store is closed right? They don't build a set. They go into a real store. And so part of the audition, if, if you kind of got the look that they're looking for, is I just want to know, are you going to be a fun person at 4 a.m.? Right? So they brought me in twice. And all they said is they handed me a bottle. Where do I have a bottle around here? Oh, sure. Yeah, I do. They handed me a bottle and said, sell me this bottle. And I went, okay. Are you finding your emotions are bogging you down? Why not bottle them up with this new bottle? <laughs> right? And so I just improvised that, that bit. And then when I came back, they handed me another bottle. And I can't remember what I said the second time. But then I, they, I got a call from my agent going, you booked it. They think you're really fun. The commercial had nothing to do with a bottle. The commercial, I had to point to a coffee maker. <laughs> right? And that's when I was talking to them going like, why did you pick me? And they went, you're, you're a fun guy. <laughs> and we knew you would be fun to work with, right? Because it's not like you need, that, that could have been a skilled monkey that could have pointed to the <laughs> maker, right? right? They didn't, they didn't, it wasn't like my Shakespeare training got me that commercial. Yeah, although you know if he went to Studio 58, by that point he had actually had Shakespeare training, which is quite wonderful. Um, yes, one, of the, exactly. one, of the, one of the great things about that part of your story, uh, uh, David, is I, I happen to know that, uh, that Melissa, who's here, is just finishing law school. Oh, no way! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. That's, that's a fun little example. Uh, so yeah, improv, um, let me just see. Has improv made you a funny person was a question that somebody asked. It, it, this is tricky. There are people who are naturally, I think there's two types of people. I think there's funny people and there's loud people. <laughs> and loud people aren't necessarily funny. <laughs> They're just loud. Uh, and you can sometimes see that. You can see someone like really pushing and you just go, mm, you're not making me laugh though. However, that said, improv is all about technique right? Like ballet or even organized sports. So if it's about technique, then it must be learnable to some degree, right? So I teach comedy and I teach improv, but I think it's, it, it's tricky because <laughs> it does make you, the more you do, well, the more you do anything, the better you get at it, right? I won't say their name, but there was someone who was involved with theater sports who, when she was first involved, she was not a funny person at all. And like you almost thought she would, they were putting her on stage because they felt sorry for her. <laughs> but I saw her like eight years later and she just kept slugging away on it. And she now was hilarious. When, right? when, I, get, uh, when I get students in my class, you know, uh, even folks as young as like, you know, 11 or 12, 
uh, who s uh, um, seem to be sort of naturals, you know, at comedy. Like I give them a comedy script and they're sort of peppering in, you know, they've got the timing and they're peppering in their own things uh, in conversations with those people. Um, every single time I've found that they just like either have a deep love of watching that kind of comedy and they've watched thousands and thousands of hours of that kind of comedy, you know, or uh, they have like family or friends who they have been performing for, you know, again, you know, like making those people in their life laugh, you know, so um, I, mm. I, I have a, a pretty strong belief that like um, almost every part of it, you know, comes from, uh, from practice, you know, and if there's anything that, that's natural, it's, or, or you know, that, that it, at least for comedy, like that they absolutely is really just like if somebody happens to have like an innate love of it enough that they're going to engage with it like uh, repeatedly over time. Yeah, and I think totally. And I think one of the things that you have to do, like I, uh, I've done stand up a little bit, not a lot, uh, but in Judy Carter's book, The Comedy Bible, and another guy I just read recently, uh, do, do You Talk Funny? He says, you just perform it live, bomb. Like go and try to say a, a funny story, a show like The Flame, or story, story, lie. Once the world goes back to normal, and we can do shows, um, and have a couple that you just want to cry when you leave. You're like, "Oh my God, I suck so bad," right? But then go back and do it again, because when you are in front of live people, you start to learn what they respond to and what they don't respond to. Seek out mentors, people who are smarter than you. I just the other day I met with um, Michael knows him probably Bernard Cuffling. Because mm. uh, I'm working on something, and I went, Bernard, can you just advise me on this thing? Because you're older and wiser. Yes, there are people who are older than me. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, practice yeah. and do it, right? David, that's the one of the pieces of, of accidental business advice uh, that you gave me at the uh, very beginning, before I'd, I'd started teaching, before I started running my school, you know, which is that you just told me, um, that you always tried to hire people you thought were more talented or smarter than you. And you gave me a reasons why. And I it really strongly influenced uh, my decision about which teachers to hire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, you always want to be trying to raise your game up, right? So you always want to try to work with people or, or even seek them out, buy them coffee, <laughs> give them something specific. Oh, I, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to tell this story. Right. But yeah, the more you can get in front of people, if you, if you want to try to be funny um, and that really helps you for commercials because it makes you more lively. There's an interesting thing. I, I digress for a moment, but Pixar, I saw an interview with the people from Pixar and almost all the people, they said all the people that we hire to do our voice acting for Pixar films are comedians. If you think about it, like they have Ellen DeGeneres or Tim Allen or Tom Hanks. And they said the reason being is comic actors know how to make the lines for animated characters pop. They know how to spin them. They know how to do the timing on them more so than the dramatic actors. Funny actors can do drama. Dramatic actors can't necessarily do comedy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Um, so yeah, the, the more experience is improv training for sure, because improv teaches you all about supporting your teammates. Oh, I feel like I should start talking a little bit. Uh, Duke, did you want to jump in with a question? Sure, sure. You talked about going back to real life and performing and training in improv then, but that's going to be a little ways away. Yeah. What are you or what are we to do now that we have Zoom and not a lot of friends we can hang out with? Um, well, one of the things that I do, I teach, uh, I'm now teaching third term improv uh, and I, uh, at Vancouver Film School. And uh, I'm setting them up for doing sitcom in term four. And one of the things that uh, my buddy Nelson Wong said, oh, have you had Nelson be a speaker? I no, I haven't, but you're right. I should totally ask Totally get Nelson. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, he said, David, make them read jokes. And so I went online and I downloaded a whole bunch of jokes and I make the students read the jokes to each other. So they just practice speaking, right? And uh, and then I help tweak their timing on it. Some of the jokes I know, um, these are probably people who you guys don't know, Mitch Hedberg. So 
I can give them direct information on how to deliver the line because I know who Mitch Hedberg is. And I go, try to do it again, but more dry, <laughs> right? Uh, or, um, and it's, it, it was to help them so that when they get a sitcom script, they can spot the jokes in it and they know how to spin the line or say the lines. So that is probably something that you could do, Duke, is go uh, have everyone just go research. So right now you're doing other people's jokes. You're just trying to say them so that you are eliciting a laugh. And it could be even dad jokes and stuff. What's my favorite dad joke recently? Why did the teacher have cross eyes? Because she couldn't control her pupils. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the have, have you tried teaching improv online, David? I know that there's a yes. number of, of online improv classes. You know, and yeah. you, is there some effectiveness to it? You know, the, the the problem I find with Zoom and doing improv online is improv is all about making the other person look good and accepting their offers. And I like they just we just had a COVID scare at our school. I wasn't there, so. They were saying, can we move your next class to online? And I went, can we move it to next week? <laughs> so it's not online. <laughs> um, so I myself am finding it challenging to do improv mm -hmm. online because I can't see the actors connecting. And also, as you guys probably already know, there's a bit of a time delay in Zoom. Yeah. So even if you're doing word at a time, it would be one day I went <laughs> and you're like why did they take so long are they thinking are they being a bad improviser or is there a zoom time delay mm -mm. So, that, that's just me though i'm sure there's other people who are very skilled at it I'm, I'm stuck in my ways <laughs> <laughs> um well and i mean i i think the folks who i've heard say good things about their online improv classes are folks who didn't have the opportunity to study improv until they were stuck at home and they could contact a, they could take a free second city class, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the, from their living room, you know, so they, they might not have anything to compare it to. I, I definitely have had some of my younger students uh, talk about having positive experiences there, but, uh, but it's possible they, they don't have anything to compare it to. A, a basis of comparison. Yeah, totally. Um, I know in Vancouver, if you're a Vancouver person, uh, as soon as they lift this newest restriction, there's a group called Tightrope Improv. And they have been doing uh, improv drop-ins and they do grid marks like that we do at our school where you can't step out of that zone. So you're with someone, they're in the room with you, but they are six feet away six feet away from you. Oh, great. Okay. The more you can learn to hold your own in front of an audience too, that's another way to make income. I've traveled around the world and seen the world because I started to become very good at just speaking with audiences. Uh, as Michael mentioned, I work a lot as an MC and a host. So I, uh, I've been able to use that skill to see the world, um, get paid to see the world. <laughs> I got to go to Rome. I got to go to Bosnia and Israel. They paid me to be there. <laughs> that does sound pretty great. Yeah. Um, the uh, now I, I want to uh, uh, I want to make sure that we get questions from you know uh, folks who haven't uh, had a chance to ask questions yet. And if we've got time to ask you about your experience, sort of learning to be a director, you know, then we will. And if oh, not. Yeah. We'll uh, well, and if not, we'll save that for another time because you're, you know, it'll just be a good reason for us to bring you back you know, when you're further along and you're like, I'm learning to you know, be a director project. Uh, Candy, oh. do you want to jump in? Yes, hello. Hi. Hi, thank you so much for everything you shared, David. That was really awesome. Super cool. Um, so I've been curious, yeah, a little bit about comedy and in the improv, um, so I actually was talking to a friend of mine that was um, curious about improv too, but what was it? Okay, so how much, because you said improv has been like lots of years of practice and stuff, how much of improv do you feel is actually totally off the cuff versus memories and things you maybe you've said before? Oh. That's kind of a thought I had. Um, I, and I, I had did, another question. So. Okay, I'll do that really, really quick. Yeah. Yeah, uh, when you're doing improv really well and you're following the yes and rule and you're making each other look good, we got accused all the time of doing scripted stuff. We never were. 
Um, that's one of the reasons why if you see improv shows, they get suggestions. They don't get suggestions because they have to. It's very capable of Michael and I could just start improvising and do something uh, without getting a suggestion. The re big reason they get the suggestion is to prove they're making it up, right? Okay. It's proved to the audience. Look, we used your suggestion. Clearly, we didn't plan that. The only thing that kind of happens is I started to get some stock characters that I would just put them in different situations. Because I knew I could do a voice like this and go, well, I don't know, mom, I don't know. Right, so I could do that, that, so there would be a character that I could put, right, they didn't say the same things. They might move or have the same physicality, right? But yeah. I, I didn't have necessarily stock lines or stock bits. Although at theater sports, there were some one-liner jokes that have been passed on from generation to generation to generation. That if you went and saw theater sports for six shows in a row, you might hear a couple lines said twice or three or four times. Um, but those are more, again, one-liners, not necessarily whole scenes. Right, right. Well, that's cool. OK. Yeah. Um, and I had another, well, it's kind of like really broad. But so since you've kind of done a whole bunch of things mm -hmm. um what is your like what are similarities or maybe like drastic differences between this is a lot so improv versus stand-up versus like comedy and film and co comedy in like a tv show like, well and i th i think even there with drama mm -hmm. um right i think the biggest thing is i i when i get any kind of script i look at how to make it high stakes how can i make these stakes higher I usually, I usually choose with the other character that I want to kill them or make love to them. <laughs> right? I figure you can't get much higher stakes than that. Uh, uh, so, sorry, are there kids here? Um, yes, but they can handle it. It's me. fine. You know, like if, okay, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Uh -huh. Hold their hand. Um, uh, the only thing, the biggest difference between, like when I did the movie Twisted Slipper, I was doing these very, very funny lines. And the only thing that was really frustrating about doing comedy on film is if you have a professional crew, they will not laugh because they'll ruin the take, right? So I was doing Twisted Slipper and I started to get full of self-doubt. You know how actors always have self-doubt, right? You're, you're an emotional being, that what, that's what makes you a great actor. And you're an emotional being that makes you a horrible actor, right? Your superpower is also your kryptonite. And so I was doing the movie and I was going, oh my God, I suck. I suck so bad. Oh, I can't believe I'm bombing. And I said that to someone. I was like, is there something I could be doing that's funny? It's like, no, you're being very funny. I go, but nobody's laughing. And it's like, well, they can't laugh because it'll be on camera, they'll you'll like hear them. So, and there was one where I did a big prat fall. And when the director yelled cut, the crew cracked up afterwards, right? Because the cut had been called. So that's probably the biggest difference is when you're doing, that's why it's helpful to do live comedy so that you kind of know where the timing is or know where you have to take a short pause because you're used to it. And when you're doing it on film, there's no, studio well in vancouver we don't we don't have studio audiences for any of our stuff here in vancouver right michael no. it's very rare there was um, there were two tv shows and there i, I don't believe there are currently any tv shows yeah, yeah there, i remember there was one a long time ago that yeah. i think only there's like one kids years. show called mr young and then there was a uh, an adult show called package deal and both of those had live audiences but both of those were like odd exceptional unusual for vancouver audiences yeah so yeah you're, that's the biggest difference we're, we're at time. I'm, I'm t fine for being here, but I don't know if you have to kill me here. No, I totally don't. Um, you know, I just you know, want to be like respectful of your time and, you know, uh, both folks may have um, made uh, commitments. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, does anybody have a last and burning question you want to jump in uh, with for uh, Mr. David Jones? You know, and then uh, truly, I, I will, you know, try and, and see if we can get him back, you know, a, a little bit further into his personal adventure of uh, getting everything he needs to join the Directors Guild of Canada, because yeah. you know, that uh, that's another whole conversation uh, that would be really cool to... Can I show them a really fun picture? Of course. Can, I do, can I do share screen on, on mine? Um, I might have to just make you... Oh, a no, it, it's available. Nope. There. There you go. Can you see that? 
Can you guys yeah, see that? Absolutely can. Yeah. One of the things that I like doing too is I like being different characters. Oh, this is all of your different characters. Oh my <laughs> gosh, it's so great. So some of those are from movies, some of those are from TV shows, some of those are from live. As you can see, I was Scrooge. That was for a live event. I'm wearing a fake nose there. And I was Santa. <laughs> wow, David, this is wild. Yeah, I love, I love, that's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, yeah. Okay, thanks thought the, 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 yeah, I have a couple women there. There's a queen is in there too. That was for a short film. So yeah, I just wanted um, to show that. <laughs> okay, now um, maybe the last thing I'll ask you uh, is, sure. You know, uh, for today anyway, you know, is, you know, uh, advice for, you know, uh, actors who are um, sort of getting started, you know, is there, you know, any kind of um, anything that you want to leave people with, you know, as I advice? Or is, uh, do it as much as possible. Make your own films, make your own stuff and know that you're going to suck and that's okay. Right. Like you have to, the uh, Ira Glass, which I don't know if you've quoted him before, Michael. I, I have showed them uh, the, the entire so, clip, yeah. Yeah, where, where your talent and your taste are totally different. So you just have to, you just have, oh, it says my internet connection is unstable, or maybe it's just me. Um, so just start doing stuff. If you start posting stuff into the world of, the, you know, onto the YouTube or into the world, you know, you're also going to get the people who start saying, you suck. You can delete those comments, but, you know, that also sort of hardens you up a little bit to realize, well, how do they know I suck? What are they basing it on? What are they comparing it to? Um, so just start doing it. As quickly oh, as possible. That, um, that reminds me, David, you know, this is, you know, uh, of just this beautiful uh, quote from uh, Viola Davis uh, that, uh, mm -hmm. I found this morning, you know, uh, and so, you know, I will back David up, you know, by uh, sharing this. Um, uh, she says acting uh, and, you know, uh, Viola Davis, you know, somebody who like uh, came into the fullness of her career uh, later in life, like, you know, sort of in, in the middle of her life. Um, acting culture can be brutal. The notes can simply say not attractive enough, too old, too dark skinned, not skinny enough. They tell you to develop a thick skin so things don't get to you. What they don't tell you is that your thick skin will keep everything from getting out too. Love, intimacy, vulnerability, I don't want that. Thick skin doesn't work anymore. I want to be transparent and translucent. For that to work, I won't own other people's shortcomings and criticisms. I won't put what you say about me on my load. It's Viola and, and I think too, the the, other thing is that allow yourself to be disappointed. Uh, uh, allow yourself to be sad. Just don't become obsessive with it. Uh, I was pinned for a movie and I was so excited because I hadn't worked on a film in a long, long time. And I was pinned. I was like, you know, uh, sex, you know, I was, I was a choice. <laughs> um, I know pinned doesn't necessarily mean you got it, right? You're just pinned. Uh, and then my agent called me and said, oh, David, they've, they've released you. And I was like, no. And I was biking home and I started to cry because I had really wanted it because, you know, pandemic and everything. And I was so excited to get pinned. And I started to swallow my tears. I started to go, and then I was, oh, screw it. I'm on my bike. I'm just going to bawl. And I just cried all the way home. And yeah. by the time I got home, I wasn't sad anymore. Right. I was like, okay, you grieved. You didn't get the part. You really wanted it because it's been a while. It's a sad thing. Don't pretend you're not sad. <laughs> Push through the sadness and let it out the other side. Right. Mm. Beautiful. So, yeah. um, yeah. thanks, David. That's that's really wonderful. You know, like one of the the best things I think about having really skilled and experienced uh, actors uh, here as guests. You know, is you know, for folks to hear over and over again. You know that it doesn't. It doesn't always have to, you know, like feel easy, you know, and that uh, that sort of making space for the rest of it's important. Yeah, if you if you get angry because something went wrong, it's okay to rage. What was it in cabaret? She goes under a bridge when a train goes over and screams. She goes ah to get all her anger out. You know. So yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Well, uh, everybody unmute yourselves and uh, give uh, David C. Jones, you know, some love. Oh, before they do that, David, uh, do, do you want to share, you know, a, I don't know, a Twitter handle or, a, you know, basically if people want to find you and follow you and, you know, see oh, what you're doing in the world, where, where would I'll they go? I'll tell you something really cool. Uh, if you could go to Twitter and uh, 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 follow me there because I lost all my Twitter followers. <laughs> I had a thousand. Now I only have sixty. <laughs> so my Twitter is at is at, at I am David C Jones. Uh, I ran for office and I had to get rid of my Twitter handle. And Twitter doesn't save them for you. And I brought it back. Ah, uh, I see. I thought it was like like you you said something provocative and they all left. No, like it's no, very no, dramatic. no. When you run for political office, you have yeah. to like scrub your social media and they said David you don't have anything controversial you just have some stuff that's really silly so <laughs> and I'm like yeah well I'm a funny guy uh so that could be used against you so if you could deactivate your Twitter and your Instagram Instagram uh, keeps everything so the minute you reactivate it they're all there but Twitter deletes everything so I started back I know so I'll follow me on Twitter David also ran for public office, right? Did I forget to mention that in his list of accomplishments? Um, yeah. The Okay, great. Now you know where to find him. Uh, he's I am uh, David C. Jones at Twitter. Now unmute yourselves and uh, give David some love. Thank you, David. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming, David. Really appreciate no it. Great fun. Thank so you, good. guys. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Okay, bye. I'll leave now.